is this a fetish or is this actually a video? <laughs> and it's weirdly entertaining. Just usually like, both. Mm. Sometimes both. But it's just like, ah, oh, are they are they getting past the sensors by being like, oh, no, it's not a lady in latex. It's just latex that I'm rubbing baby oil on. This isn't a fetish at all. Yeah, it's. Hi, and welcome this, to this, Blank Bodies. This is where we're starting. Sick. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Blank Bodies, a Vampire the Masquerade V5 tabletop and horror podcast. As always, I'm your host, Hunter, and I'm joined by John and Sarah. Yes, yes. I was trying to pop my toes. That's what that face was. Uh, it didn't work, so it just hurt. I'm sorry. You gotta, you gotta, we're, we're internet people now. We have to like protect our feet online because, <laughs> you know, that's money we're, that we would just be leaving on the table. That's we can't, money, baby. We cannot be giving the yeah. goods away for free like that. And you, we will know we have made it as a podcast when one of us ends up on, uh, I think it's what, Foot Finder? Hell yeah. Or Foot Wiki? Yeah, there's like. I'm just terrified one of our listeners is just gonna do it. <laughs> Just put us on there now. <laughs> I know, I know exactly. He'd be the one. We can we can bleep out the name just yeah. to be sure for that part, but we know. And it's like I don't think I don't think he would do that. I don't but think he'd actually do would. it. I don't think he would actually do it. Now would would he do it as a ha ha or threaten it as a ha ha? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Uh. <laughs> but speaking of networking, today we're talking about the Malkavian Madness Network. Networking. I like that this is our palate cleanser. <laughs> yeah, well, I figure after two episodes of talking about actual murders on tape, I figure it'd be a good topic that can be a little silly, but it, it is lore, but the lore isn't like deep. I'm not going to be citing dates. It's a little looser lore-wise. It's technically our first lore sheet episode because it is directly the cobweb from V5 is the lore sheet. We'll get into that. But we're also, you know, the Madness Network is also known as the cobweb, the tapestry, the weave, David, many other things depending on how the individual Malkavian perceives it and how they interact with it. But we'll get we'll get into that. David. Yeah. I like that. Hi, David. But yeah, so we're going to talk about some relevant lore, a lot of different theories that are posited throughout some of the books. We're going to talk about integrating them into your game and character and even my own individual theory. So hell of yeah. what's going on. So it'll be a fun one. But before we get into it, do you want to have a content warning? There's going to be mild mental health talks again because of the Malkavians. This one's not going to be super specific. This one, I think, is high end, mostly supernatural talk because we're talking about like the web or the tapestry itself for most of the episode there will be illusions and we'll talk about mental illness but none specifically so no. if that's not your bag i understand but yeah if you're not into the existential dread of uh, where do you begin and end as a person you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah so let's get into it um i did take some basic notes at the beginning here that i think are just important to lay out before we get started as kind of like ground rules um, so if you drink Malkavian blood, it can cause a type of madness or derangement in earlier editions of the game. Other clans can learn dementation through tutoring like any other discipline. And that also is known to cause some sort of temporary madness, the stronger the blood you drink and the more you drink of it. Malkavian ghouls definitely have their own ex eccentricities. Nailed it. There it is. Yeah. I'll, that'll, no one will know after that <laughs> edit. Um, <laughs> Definitely have their eccentricities, to put it nicely, but uh, none of them can ever tap into the Madness Network. I'm specifically putting that up front because this implies that what is clan-specific is not the discipline or the madness itself, but what lies beyond it. In the same way that you can drink all the Ventru blood you want, you'll never get a rarefied palate, you know... You can drink all of any clan's uh, blood and you never get their bonus or negative. But when you drink a Malkavian blood, you do get some of that madness, implying that that's not what spe is special about their clan, like many people think it is. Right. That's neat. Yeah. That, that makes me feel a little bit more valid as a storyteller with the, uh, because in V5, dementation is now a uh, aspect of dominate, not its own like tree. Mm-hmm. I'm not uh, the biggest fan of that, but I understand why they did it. Yeah, it's one of those. Um, I I appreciate having that streamlined, but I am also one of those like d DMs that I own that World of Darkness has a lot of stuff in it, and I'm not going to be a Wikipedia. I, there's no way I'm ever going to remember every little factoid about everything in this fucking game, and expecting anybody one person to is silly. How fucking dare you? Uh, but uh, I also uh to keep things chill. 
uh, tend to limit demontation to. Any Malkavian can have this. I'm not going to question it. You don't have to have it. If anybody outside of the clan wants to get this, you better fucking explain yeah, you, how you ha- this happened. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I still personally, if I were running a game, would keep it too. You have to be a Malkavian or learn it from one. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it doesn't specifically say it's Malkavian specific, I would keep it that way. I mean, even all the way up through V20, mm-hmm. Dominate Malkavians and Dementation Malkavians are considered two separate bloodlines. And we'll yeah. talk about that a little bit in our... Well, we did talk about that already in our Malkavian series, if you're interested in some of that. Are, are um, you losing track of the time clan already? split, yeah. We just started the episode. I have been working on this episode for three weeks. You know what? That's fair. <laughs> Alongside other things. But um, yeah, I, I just thought that that would be something good to keep in mind before we get started. Because I feel like this clan kind of part of the reason people play this clan poorly is they're not understanding what's really going on here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the complaints about the clan is because they're taking a very base assumption from the reading and only moving forward with that. Mm -hmm. So theories, theories and theories. What is the Malkavian Madness Network, the Cobweb, the Weave? There's a lot of theories. I'm going to go through all the ones I could find, plus my own. Can we guess? Um, If if I say the one, let's, let's do this. If... I get to one where you think that's what it is. Let me know. And if not, I want to hear your guys' theories at the end. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. So we're, we're going to go through our Pepe Silvia board yeah. of uh, options. Also, I will add that the Vampire Wiki makes a pretty strong case for exactly what it is and how it works. Um but I don't think it's that's as simple as it makes it out to be. Oh. If so, if you go read the Madness Network page on the wiki, it has a very specifically, it's one of these theories and that's it mm-hmm. kind of phrasing to that's it. That's boring. I don't like that. Yeah. I mean, I know they're trying to just simple things down for new people, but it's a good reference page, but I don't necessarily agree with how it ended, how specific it is. So, totally fair. So the basic theory, Malkavians are all just be crazy. They'd be crazy like that. Yeah. Um, this is simplest theory. It's held by many non-Malkavians, just other vampires, kindred who've had to deal with them, um, especially younger kindred. Um, it's understandable to some degree from an outsider perspective. You just see one clan that's always acting weird yeah. or saying weird shit or doing weird shit. And you're like, oh, they're the freaks. Okay. Yeah. That's Ah, they're all just inherently broken. Neat. Good to know. I, I feel like this is how I've heard a lot of people introduce the clan to new players, mm-hmm. which I think is kind of lame. But um, this is the easiest way to use mental illness, real or fictional, as just the actual clan flaw and move on, which is also the riskiest way to play or run this clan. This is the easiest way to step on a landmine or upset someone else or make a really uninteresting character is by saying, my superpower is schizophrenia and moving on. And it's like, I don't think schizophrenia is a superpower. Not that it's inherently a disability it causes problem. It's just part of a person. Yeah. 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 Um, it's not a whole person. I yeah. Just, it's just part. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. It also makes all the other theories that I'm going to list forward nothing but baseless ravings. I mean, some of these have to be. There's so many different theories. Some of these have to be incorrect to some degree. But I think this theory, which you see a lot in lore and out, there are a lot of characters who are just like, oh, like even at the beginning of Bloodlines, if you pick a Malkavian, uh, the character voiced by Bender just goes, oh, you're a Malkavian too? Aren't you fucked? Basically. (laughs) Just like, oh, buddy. Sorry, Oof. pal. <laughs> Oof, <duh. laughs> That was my favorite playthrough of that game. Mm-hmm. I mean, I a lot of NPCs that I run generally have the like, oh, damn, okay, well, that's happening. Hmm. See, I prefer my Malkavians when I play them to be like, most people be like, oh, you're you're like a Ventru or something, right? Oh. Yeah. I yeah, prefer to have that moment. Yeah, the way, well, the way the NPCs react to Malkavians is generally just like, oh, f- okay, cool. Or just like slight pity in the like, ah, oh, damn. Like you're useful, but. Mm. So I think this is this next theory is what should be the clan baseline if you're introducing new players or if you're stepping into the clan for the first time. I think at least minimum all or many Malkavians are mad prophets, meaning they may be raving madmen, but they tend to hit the nail on the proverbial head occasionally to where. They might say a lot of weird shit, but then all of a sudden they tell you about your uncle who died 10 years ago and how he wants to say hi and that it's his birthday. And they're like, how do you know it's your birthday? Mm-hmm. Kind of just like weird oh fuck moments. 
Mm-hmm. Watch out for the red car tomorrow, and then you get hit by a red car mm-hmm. kind right. of things that just come out of their mouth to where, like, maybe everything they said meant something, and I just never, it wasn't for me. Yeah. They see truths beyond mortal and kindred alike, and it pushes them over the edge. So the reason that they are so weird is that they also might just be seeing a deeper universe than we're aware of. Maybe their visions are nothing but madness and imagination with brief moments of lucidity insight. So even if a lot of what they're saying is nonsense, they have to at least occasionally be on to something. I think there ha- you have to give this clan a baseline of some sort of insight or knowledge mm-hmm. or prophecy or however you want to play it. But there needs to be more than just like, this guy's weird and annoying and he likes to fuck with people. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's another big theory. I think one of my favorites when I first read through the clan books was Malkavians can see the true reality. Yeah, this is the one that I generally try to run with in my games. It's just, uh, uh, it's kind of more of a, uh, you, the best way I think to explain this is the, the shift in uh, representation and art once uh, an understanding of like film and like quantum mechanics and all that starts to get into the art world where you get uh abstract art like cubism where you're able to see one figure but on multiple planes at the same time or like that futuristic art where or futurism where it's showing a figure in motion with motion blur in it but it's a painting yeah that yeah. kind of shit and then everybody just was like i can't believe this is happening you're destroying western art what is beauty anymore Blah. That's kind of where I kind of stick Malkavians is like they just have a such a radically different perspective because they're able to rationalize the world in a way that others don't. And then trying to take that information and give it to everybody else is just kind of a hurdle. I forgot to read my sources oh. at the beginning of the episode, but um, I went through both the original clan book, original revised Lore of the Clans, V20 or V5 and Chicago by Night. Mm-hmm. Um, this theory is the one that's posited hardest in the very first original clan book. I've heard some people say that it's because they are getting ready to release Changeling and Mage and they wanted to tie Vampire into it a little stronger. So they made the clan that's similar to them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true behind the scenes. I've heard that said multiple times, but, um, this true reality they see, whether it be what Changelings or the Mages see or both they are seeing things that other vampires and humans can't Mm -hmm. and none of what they're saying is really mad ravings it's more they're trying to describe something with a sense that you don't have almost yeah they're they're seeing another dimension beyond what you can see and there's no way that your third dimensional brain can understand the fourth dimension they're looking at kind of vibe Mm -hmm. is the way i take it this one can be really fun especially if you have a character who thinks this is what's going on this is their perception of what's happening to them yeah it gets very like if you want good movie references for this stuff like ponty pool or uh from beyond or dark city yeah that kind of stuff and then just yeah have somebody who's just like i've seen things there's purple worms and like they they legit have but other people haven't been able to perceive that. So when you just say that sentence with no context, it's fucking lunacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, hooray. Yeah. I think this one's also really fun if you want to do some cross play in your games. Mm-hmm. So especially as the more V5 game lines are coming out, we get a major changeling soon. You can definitely even do this with werewolf a little bit. Like, why wouldn't a Malkavian be able to see like the Guru spirit lands or at least a, sh- a hint at them? And just start talking to one of the guru and then be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Or, you know, they might just catch, like, out of their side eye, just part of the spirit realm. And now they're just like, well, uh, those trees are spooky. We're just not going to go there. No, absolutely not. Oh, I had a conversation with that tree last night. And then the guru is like, "Um, that is a sacred spirit that we give, like, op pay homage to every night oh yeah he's cool i call him greg yeah greg's cool greg does owe me five dollars (laughs) though i I feel like they've got that kind of vibe about it where they're they're seeing things and even they might not understand what they're actually seeing and as an st you can have a lot of fun like picking from other things and being like well that's what they're seeing but i'm gonna describe it like this yeah Yeah. that's cool and then eventually they're like "Uh uh-oh yeah and you could this is also a good way to allow a window for a character in your coterie to have 
little info drops that they technically don't have dots in, but because they're tied in with the Madness Network, they might happen to catch a glimpse of something shifting out of the sh- the, the the Shadowlands and have like a ah, this is now how I'm able to plant a Hakata plot line into this game, even though there's no Hakata or anybody tied into that shit. Yeah. Um, I think it's also good for th- if you want to pull more stuff from older or non-vampire books when you have that one player who's maybe read a bit too much of the lore and makes things less interesting. You can always be like, well, you've never played Mummy, right? <laughs> no. Well, you're seeing something real weird. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can throw those moments that's, at people. That's how you fuck with your players uh, uh, push the glasses up the nose. But actually, just... Just give them mummy stuff. Do not say it's mummy. Just describe it, and then they'll, you know, they'll suffer. Mummy or demon. Yeah. Oh, fucking deep. God damn it. Or even Wraith, probably. Most Wraith likely. is fun, though. Wraith is fun, but the amount of people who've actually played Wraith, I feel like, is very limited. Oh, it is. Yes, yes, yes. You're um, not wrong. And I only did it because I got the opportunity at a convention, or I would never convince people to play Wraith. I don't think. It's a cool game. It's a fun game, but you definitely need at least, like, I feel like you need at least four people to, like, make that worthwhile. Well, then we'll get into that's a whole nother episode. But so I like that one a lot. Another that I feel like is posited more in some of the older books too, like the Dark Ages books and the pre Mm -hmm. pre internet where people can't really describe things like through networking and that kind of stuff, which is a lot of times where they called it the tapestry. Mm -hmm. And that theory, their theory is that Malkavians are connected to a tapestry of the clan's memories throughout all time. So whatever the cobweb is, it isn't sentient. It's you're not actually having a conversation with it. Um, this explains where these moments of insight come from. They can ex- access the me- experiences of other Malkavians. So maybe you just get flashes, whether they're appropriate or not to what's happening around you. Maybe a ne- maybe a guy in the room stabbed someone else a couple nights ago, and you weren't there for that, but another Malkavian was, and he walks in the room, and you go, "That's the guy that stabbed him." Ah, so this is basically like ye olde chat GPT. Like the 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 framework itself doesn't have its own inherent consciousness or intelligence, but uh, it is able to like click in and provide output. Yes, but um, also it's not always accurate. It's not always based on prompts. It doesn't have to be yeah. anyway. But that's where those moments of them actually having seemingly insight or knowledge of things around them is it. It's another Malkavian's experiences with that person or thing yeah. or type of event previously. Hey, mm-hmm. storytellers. Hey, hey, storytellers. Uh, you have a Malkavian in your game? You have a guy to just give plot hooks to. Mm-hmm. Do it. I like that I grabbed the mic like I was trying to threaten it a little. Just yeah. like, give your Malkavian players the plot hooks because sometimes your players, I love players. I love y'all. Sometimes y'all are fucking stupid. And... <laughs> Or I'm not explaining things correctly. I don't know. And sometimes I'm just like, you know what? What if I give it to what if I give it to the goofy little clown guy? Just like, here you go. Here you go, buddy. Here's something horrifying. Share it with your friends. And they do. They do. <laughs> with this theory, the tap I'll call it the tapestry theory. Mm. Malkavians are constantly bombarded with memories of previous and current clan members. Their experiences have created a maddening weave of time that they can learn to tap t- into and gain insight from, which is why like younger ones might just act like they're going fucking nuts because they kind of are they're being bombarded with memories and emotions and experiences of other people non-stop and their brain hasn't figured out how to filter it yet so just it's like the very first time you're on roller skates yeah you're like my feet are they move without me moving them and my, my feet are full of go yeah exactly <laughs> it's just really disorienting and, and hard to stay stay um, upright imagine making a new instagram or a new tiktok account with no input not following anyone you've ever heard of and just swiping around non-stop and do that for a half hour yeah and now but that's all being beamed directly into your brain that's kind of the vibe that they're getting all the time is just oh being burnt alive in the 18th century oh oh they're they're eating ice cream Oh, being burnt alive again. Just like <laughs> a nonstop, just thoughts, emotions, flashes, pictures. It's, it's overwhelming. Oh. And as you age as a Malkavian and put dots and things, um, you start to like filter that out and you become less of the raving madman that the younger of the clan are typically seen as and you become more of a prophet when really you're just tapping into this network of memories and I imagine going through a ma- like a network of memories. Most of them are going to be very boring. Yeah, that's, that's... it's just going to be a lot of mundane, just being like folding clothes, folding clothes, making bread, folding clothes, petting a cat. That's nice. Uh, giving a handy in an alleyway, folding clothes. 
Yeah. Burning alive. <laughs> burning alive. <laughs> well, burning unalive. Yeah. I, I feel like it'd probably be a lot more hanging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll get into it, but I have a feeling the stronger memories tend to come through the strongest. So I don't know, sure. man. I've made some really fucking bomb ass bread. <laughs> bread does have a very distinct scent. And I'm, they say I'm scent just is tied to memory like pretty oh. heavily. Oh yeah. There I'll I'll own that there are times where I've made bread where I'm just like I've had more of an emotional reaction connection to this baked bread than I have had banging. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. It's kind of sad. It's a little um, sad. <laughs> oh, banging can be smelly too, though. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I wonder how confusing it would be for a young Malkavian to get the visuals of burning alive, but then getting the scent memory of a fresh baked bread. Ah, we are in France, I see. They're both heat related. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so uh, the next big theory. Um, and this is, I think, we're starting to get closer to the truth, but that I think all of these could be true for individual characters or for your own game, obviously, but my personal opinion. The next theory is all Malkavians are one giant networked intelligence. Um that's kind of similar to the uh, the the tapestry theory. Well, yeah, the rest of the theories are versions of this, I think. Yeah. Um, but this is putting it more the most succinctly. Whereas I think like the tapestry is you are just a part of this giant fabric weave of memory and stuff. This is more like a computer network. All Malkavian minds are connected and can communicate in some way. Mm, this is okay, less. Okay. Like, you are just being thrown stimuli seemingly at random, and you can send them out to the weave as well. But this is more like a network where, like, every computer in, like, your office, you can moot files between the computers if you need to. You can all access, like, shared storage devices. You can all access the office printer. You know okay. what I mean? I, I think to, yes, and this, but maybe to make the distinction a little bit more clear, is where the tapestry is more of a non-sentient network that can be accessed and sometimes you'll just be sent things where when you get into this level of it it's essentially like a psychic slime mold where like the entity itself is alive and has its own ability to push and pull and move things and uh, alter uh the function of the organism itself not quite yet not quite yet? No. We're so, not quite in a slime mold? No, this is more where each individual Malkavian is like a computer It's like a, on the a network. node system. Uh, yeah, okay. where each so Malkavian a is a node, and they can send and receive data. Uh, okay. They can choose where it goes to. They can send it out across the whole network. Mm -hmm. They can choose to receive. Uh, okay. Young. That's why young Malkavian struggle so much. They're being forced into essentially a mental network. It breaks how you operate. Uh, it's a constant new stream of thoughts emotions ideas um they aren't just hallucinating but communicating um in this version it's more like hearing every conversation in the city but then occasionally the conversation addresses you by name gross so again it's like when you first i don't know if you've ever done like any networking stuff but if you once you know once you get into the router mm -hmm. you can see every bit of data going across the internet to every computer and mm -hmm. having to filter all that the thing is your computer does that automatically mm -hmm. but if your brain is getting thrown into a network like that it doesn't know what is important and what isn't yeah. so it's going to take all that data of like someone checking their facebook someone checking the folding their clothes yeah exactly it's We're all the same reference a lot, like lot of a lot of laundry like, yeah yeah but it, Fuck, it's it's all stimuli that is unsorted that's what's happening when why the younger ones are so wild is that they are being just constantly stimulated. It's like being, it's like being like a tablet kid, mm -hmm. just constant stream of information and you can't tear yourself away from it. And you end mm -hmm. up on those Elsa and Spider-Man videos and you're just fucked. Yeah. This is starting to how we get to like where things like the great prank are possible, which we talked about in our Malkavian series, which is where all the Malkavians, who were Camaria essentially came together or most of them came together and they performed a ritual that removed dementation from the clan, except for the ones that were in the Sabbat. Um, that's a quick summary of the event, but that's, this is getting closer to how essentially they ran, they forced a network upgrade on every computer in the system to say, you can't do that anymore, but now you get this. Mm. It's also where you, I think things like Malkavian time start to make sense. We talked about this too. Malkavian time was an actual entity. What, well, no, Malkavian time was an actual 
thing you could spend points on in earlier editions of Vampire. Mm -hmm. It's been integrated into everything else in V5. We'll get towards that in part of the end. It's not a standalone thing anymore. But um, it's basically where you can put out a call to other clan members and you schedule like clan meetings. And essentially, the more powerful, the better at it. The more Malkavians you can reach, the more specific of a time you can make it. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's an old vampire thing that that's half still a thing. It's not as it's not as big as it used to be. But being a big network computer, then kind of network, it makes more sense where you mm -hmm. can call meetings like that by just saying sending up a signal and being like this alleyway, three a.m. <laughs> bring toast. We are we are meeting at Charles Entertainment Cheese's location. Yes, yes. Um, so this next one. I think it's getting closer to what you were mm, suggesting, yeah. Sarah, which is that uh, many, but not all, of Malkavians are the network. So they gain understanding and control over the network with age and with power of blood and generation and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but the clan, um, the clan book actually posits that powerful enough Malkavians may even be able to create a copy of themselves on the network. Mm. So essentially you can upload your consciousness, whether it just be a backup of their memories or an actual autonomous thinking personality is in question. So even the Malkavians who have done it don't know necessarily if I'm just making sure all my memories exist forever within the memories of my clan mm -hmm. or if it is like my brain will go on forever and be able to continue being a thinking independent being. Right. Because you separate yourself from that consciousness when you make the copy. Yeah. So you're just like, well, he's doing something. He's doing a thing. You know, That's a real good way to get around uh, Dominate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to upload all my memories just all the fucking time. Madness Network, have it. Have it all. Uh, there's like Somebody several... dominates you to forget and you're like, God, I feel like I'm, I don't remember something. It's like, hey, uh, here it is. Hey, man, uh, it's Charlie from like three nights ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not that easy. Oh, Damn. Checks. Um, so I would say 98% of Malkavians don't even know it's possible. And you have to learn it's possible. You have to come up with the idea to even try it. And it's impossible to learn that you can do it through the network. So mm. you, the cobweb will never tell you to upload yourself to the cobweb. Right. It's something that you have to come upon as your own. Which, again, also makes it kind of tricky. And there's no mechanics for this in the game. There's no actual way to really do this in-game unless you have a really nice GM. Because it's usually done by very, very powerful vampires. And it's usually done not too long before they stop existing. Mm. So you can't just easily create a copy of yourself and talk to them every night. Um, usually, it, it literally might be... With the the amount of the perceived prophecy and stuff of the clan, tomorrow's my final night. I need to back some things up today, kind of thing. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, it's less. Um, yeah, it's less just like I have like a non attached storage device I can put my memories and talk to, and more like an oh shit button for very powerful Malkavians. Gotcha. Um, which I originally cut it out of the script, but I do think it's interesting if you look into some of the stories the lore pieces in the clan books mm -hmm. of characters like Jane Pennington or Crazy Jane, mm -hmm. uh, the Plague Bride. She was a one of um, Malkov, the Antediluvian's handmaidens, mm -hmm. um, who pretty much she um, comforted him in his nights of madness and struggle. She was the one to wipe his the sweat off his brow and take care of him. And he appreciated it so much that he ended up turning her. Um, mm. So she's That's been around. That's a great gift. Thanks, man. I could have gotten a watch. <laughs> or but, a pen. I would have preferred a pen. Yeah. But um, <laughs> there's a couple stories where, you know, she shows up in modern nights to new Malkavians and, like, comforts them and talks them through their these, like, rough thoughts they're having during they turn and, like, gives them knowledge of the clan. And, and then they mention that, oh, yeah, I ran into this person called Crazy Jane, and she helped me out. And then their sire being like, she died 350 years ago. What do you mean you saw her kind of moments yeah. where she might still exist in this network? Now, is that just a memory of her comforting those being turned? And so this almost like living memory can appear to other Malkavians and comfort them through their becoming. Right. 
Or is she still out there? Because there's rumors she's still alive, too. She's a character with not a lot of answers. There's a lot of what is going on with her. She's a fun one. But yeah, there are things that hint at some of the at there being like intelligent beings within this network. Isn't she referenced in one of the bloodlines? Bloodlines... Or was it Redemption that she's mentioned? I think it's Redemption. Maybe, because I haven't played Redemption, but Redemption does start in the Dark Ages period, and um, she would still be alive in that period. I I believe she died canonically when she quote-unquote might have died was in the early 1900s. Okay. I don't... I I actually, from my readings, I couldn't... I was already going to have a larger part about her in this episode because I think it is interesting and does tie into this topic, but there's not a lot of actual, like, strong info about her. Her story is very implied from the stuff I was reading. So So have fun with it. Yeah. I mean, she might show up in some novels. And if she shows up in some of the books and you want to run with that, go for it. I, I will admit that a lot of the actual written fiction for this game line is my blind spot for this. But going off the game books, um, yeah, she's cool. Definitely recommend go checking out the um, first two Malkavian clan books if you want more actual lore about this kind of thing. Hell yeah. But yeah, so uploading yourself is so hard that there's never been a mechanic or even a hint at how one does it across any of the editions of the game. While it's been hinted at that it's happened and it's possible, never once is it mentioned how one does so, how one learns to do so. Hmm. I mean, I as a game designer can understand the, hey, maybe we should not give game players the ability to just get out of consequences by (laughs) uploading themselves onto the Madness Network, but there's also just... A lot of vampire powers, or just powers in general, World of Darkness, that I'm like, this is a little power gamey and horseshit, but, you know, that's... I also own being somebody who prefers a lot more (laughs) street-level... Pardon me. Street-level stories. Next theory is one of the big ones, and it is that Malkov is the network. The Malkavian antediluvian, when he died, and his body was eaten by members of his clan to preserve his thoughts, he what they ate became the network. They literally ate the blood-stained soil underneath his body, and that going into them is what gave the clan its madness and created the network. Hmm, cool. That's, um, I think, more and more posited the deeper you go through additions. Um, it's also the ap- clan's apocalypse scenario. Um, it's what the Sabbat thinks is happening, mm. is that just when he awakens, like all antediluvians, when they come back, they have a borderline apocalypse scenario that they set into motion. His is that he just takes control of all the Malkavians in the network, so they all become Malkov. Oh, Every shit. single Malkavian. That's just, wild. Um, I don't have this in my notes, but one thing I think found that was interesting was that the Sabbat's plan to counteract that is just to create so many Malkavians that uh, he is spread so thin <laughs> that he can't control it, which is part of why there are so many Sabat Malkavians, why they have just like hordes of them. It's part of it is they're just trying to create so many that if he does wake up, he can't handle That's how hilarious. many of his own children there are to take real control of them. That's really funny. <laughs> it's literally just a DDoS attack. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> So you can't control. Look, if we all storm Area 51, (laughs) they can't stop us all. (laughs) V5, if you actually read through some of it, pretty much everything but explicitly says that this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. There are multiple times where it pretty openly says that, like, yep, that's him or likely part of him or he is splintered as a part of all of his children. Minds. Yeah. I've I have done the hinting of Malkov is in there and because he's the biggest one, he's able to more directly just be like, hey, hey, Phyllis, I got I got an O for you. But uh, so far as to say that he is the network, I've kind of left that more to player interpretation myself just to be like, I want to know what story they're going to tell me on this. <laughs> What's going to make them go uh, the most and then just kind of yes and into that. I kind of like that, too, though, like going with the, the very computery network um metaphor it's like all of the malkavians are computers and servers but malkov is the internet if does that make sense is he that is the is coding that, malkov yeah. is the coding to make all the hardware yeah go. pretty much yeah um he's th- the thing that is created by networking all of these things together yeah and there are almost as many theories 
hear about Malkov and how and what this is happening, as there are theories about the network itself. So I will save, I saved some of the more info here for when we do our future Antediluvians series. Um, I didn't want to get deep into Malkov himself here, and there are just as many ideas of what happened to him after he was eaten as there are what the network is. And so I figure we'll mention it, but we could do a whole episode just talking about what he's up to right now, where he is, where his body, if it still exists, is, all that kind of thing. So, yeah. Hell yeah. Also, just Malkov is, a, is just an entity, antediluvian, I have found in games to be terrifying, but it's such an existential threat that you can just kind of have it hovering it's over your story and not have it completely just derail any plots that you have. Yeah, it's also one of those... It's interesting. It's posited by some that he's the one of the only antediluvians who never actually went her way or went to sleep. He just immediately became a part or became this consciousness that is the weave and has been around the entire time. And he's just watching the world through all of his children's eyes. I dig it. That'd be like a kind of a hell for him if it was essentially like someone stuck behind the TV watching all of his children where he can like change the channels look through them but he can't really interact with the characters very well he might be able to yell at the tv and every once in a while the malkavian will hear it but like <laughs> he's trying to affect the that'd be a personal it's like the, for him. It, or it would be like the end of i believe it's the second matrix movie mm. where um they think that you know they solved everything we got outside of the computer and then they walk into the room with all the tvs and the guy in the white suit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's the one just been watching everything he goes oh neo it's good to see you again i've never met you this version of you's never met me no right yeah the kind yeah. of moment where he's just so knows so much that he kind of knows what's going to happen mm -hmm. just because he's seen the patterns in the world over and over and over again yeah cool um <sighs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that more at the end. Um, now, this is my personal theory mm -hmm. uh, time. I believe that multiple of these are true. Let me lay out how, how I think that works out. All right. Lay it on us, homie. All right. So the youngest of the clan essentially are just mad or experiencing what appears to be like mental illness, that kind of thing. While the older are more, as they get more powerful, they begin to tap into to the cobweb more. Mm -hmm. um, the madness could be the new vampire's brains essentially being rewired and reworked to be a part of the network. Essentially, um, you know, insert a Borg reference here. But the second you become a Malkavian, it just starts rewriting your brain. I dig it. And it, that could take years. That could take nights. Right. Just depends on the person. Could take and hours. Just a really rough out few hours. Oof. <laughs> but ow. Mm -hmm. That that's what that's what's going on there. When you get the young ones who are just acting weird, or even the old ones who all of a sudden just seem to go mad. Something's reworking things in there on them. Mm. Somebody's to grabbing, better be a part of the network. Grabbing grabbing the meats and just giving a good little jostle. <laughs> yeah. Some Malkavians only ever receive brief flashes. They rewritten enough, but maybe they're not important. Maybe they're not strong enough. Maybe they are not interested in learning more about the network. And so they only receive brief flashes. Um, and take them as prophecy and omen. These are the more traditional seer types. That's where you get the old kind who, the court jester who all of a sudden sees an image of the king being hung mm -hmm. and warns doom upon like the, the lower power still. They're occasionally getting things. As one grows in power, they also then learn to send feelings and thoughts out. And the more powerful almost become like radio towers uh, where they can amplify and spread impulses throughout the clan. So not only are they sending and receiving, but they're rewiring and um redirecting impulses and the top then even enmesh themselves in the network becoming almost like immortal ai copies of themselves or talking to the network as if it were a being mm, the transhumanism <laughs> yeah it essentially is weirdly a transhumanist claim if you think about it but that's kind of what that's kind of my theory on what's going on there is this big network the youngins, especially the youngins with no guidance, mm -hmm. just... They're just like, oh, fuck. Yeah, essentially, it, it, it's like your brain is getting bombarded with Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and true social nonstop all day, and just no one's teaching them how, what to do with that. Whereas, like, eventually, you know, maybe they turn that off, and occasionally they just get the important flashes, they become a seer, mm -hmm. or they're like, this is interesting, I'm going to dive into it. And that's when they start to, you know, yeah. really get points. I dig that. Though some yeah. might get lost in the sauce and they're just constantly there. And you're just like, buddy, you still got to pay the electric bill. Like, Yeah, they become iPad kids. 
<laughs> oh, no. All right. So now that we've gotten all the theories and my personal pet theory out of the way, mm-hmm. what does V5 explicitly say? Hold up. I got a theory. Oh, okay. you do? Sure. Oh, yeah. You yeah did, your theory, theory didn't come up? It's kind of similar to a couple, but I think it's similar to yours where it's not could be, but I think pretty much all of these are true. Um, but I like the idea of... So I have a fan at home mm-hmm. that apparently receives the exact same radio frequency as um, one of the wireless controllers I have. Mm. So sometimes when I'm playing a game with that wireless controller, the ta- fan will turn on or off or will change settings. Mm. I think it's kind of like that. Where it's IR data. It's just not being sent to the right thing. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So they like all this stuff actually exists. We know that already. I mean, well, we don't know, but like... As far as like the the fey worlds and the spirit worlds and whatnot, all those things actually exist. I think it's just like they are able to see that, but can't control necessarily when or where it switches. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And I actually, this would be a big reveal towards the end of a campaign if I ran one or pretty explicitly stated if we're playing like a cross splat game. But I've always thought it'd be interesting. This is going very, very deep into the rabbit hole of data from multiple game lines. But like the Gru can like spirit walk and walk into other like spirit realms. The Internet is its own spirit realm that was created by like data spirits from like cities beings, that kind of thing. I almost like to think that the Madness Network could even be its own like Like, spirit realm that's specific to Malkavians. So like the a Gru or a changeling might even be able to walk into that reality at some point. It wouldn't be pleasant, probably. Yeah, I was just thinking of the poor the poor werewolf person that was just like in one spirit realm is trying to get back, but like took a left when they weren't supposed to, and now they're just walking into this fucking bucket of nonsense. It's essentially popping into like, ah, yeah. It's like a uh, delirium from Sandman. Mm-hmm. It could be uh, like delirium that. of the endless. It's like she is a, that could be Malkov. She is the entity that serves this archetype, but she is also the the land, the dimension of delirium. See, I was yeah. thinking it'd be more like in Looney Tunes, um, <laughs> where they're like, "Here lies the dodo." And they, like, you remember those old like dodo bird cartoons mm-hmm. where they're hunting the dodo, and yeah. it's just like gravity doesn't work right, and like everything's just kind of avant garde and bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that's what it'd be like to walk through. Mm. Oh, I, I was thinking very liminal horror because like just places, in an endless pla- office yeah, building. places that I find to be just absolutely batshit for me or like really awkward hallways in the airports where you're like you're in a terminal and you're trying to get to either a different terminal or like the baggage claim area and just the hallways are just like laminate that's too clean and like the overhead lights are just like that weird fluorescent that just blinks a little bit nobody knows where they're going but they're going with purpose and everybody's tired and you don't know if it's like 1990 or 2010 because of just the architecture hasn't changed and you're just like i don't know where the fuck i am i don't know what i'm doing i hate it here and everything's echoing there have been a couple times that i've accidentally ended up in like the maintenance hallways of like parking garages Mm -hmm. and like abandoned factories and that has a similar feel where it's just like it's not quite a straight path but it's just enough of a curve that you can see a really long ways down and it just slowly fades out of view and as you walk it just seems like it's not stopping because it's just going yeah or another existential thing i fucking hate uh is i don't fucking like suburbs i fucking hate suburbs and the way roads are laid out in suburbs is nonsense to me so anytime I've had to visit friends that live in those areas, if I don't fall, if I'm straight at all from the Google Maps, like I'm fucked. I have no idea where I am. There's no grid or anything that makes any sense. So I'm like, oh, I should be able to turn right and then right again and get back to my friend's street. And no, I'm going to end up somewhere else entirely. And I don't know how the fuck I got there. And all the houses look the same. It took me like four, f- four <laughs> or five times visiting your house to be able to figure out how to get there. Yeah. You because know. I kept entering the wrong entrance. Uh, Unfortunately for my apartment complex, there's technically three entrances, but two of them randomly just get closed, and yeah. there's no indication of when when that happens or why. So you're just kind of like, well, good luck. 
yeah. So yeah, that that would be my thought of just some poor changeling or mage or guru just walking into the madness network, but it would be a they wouldn't realize it for a minute because they're just like walking down a hallway or they're driving down a street and they're just like, I've taken five left turns. We should have gotten back to the main road. Where the fuck are we? Yeah, see, I I like that. I feel like it's a little tame for what like i like liminal horror but i feel like maybe just to me i think it's getting overdone I well see, it's i get like as a starting point i tend to like horror to be a little like high strangeness and then you can make it go like batshit because i don't i at least for me personally having things go from like oh it's kind of chill to suddenly you know there's a spoopy bubba duke i don't feel like that's the malkavian experience though no i think not. that for as a writing you're correct but i don't think that i think becoming or entering a, essentially a Malkavian realm would be closer to turning a corner and walking into a room with a thousand blabbering mouths. Yeah. I just, um, the I, walls yeah. are just made of the mouths. Yes. I feel oh, like, some, yeah. and all the, ma- each mouth speaks the memories of a single Malkavian. Right. Yeah. I was going to say, if at least for my uh, character outside of Malkavians running into this would be a, like a, okay, it seems normal. And then just, it just the weirdness gets cranked as you're going and then you're like oh hold on I've, i'm in the mouth room yeah I, f- I feel like at least the way I, I my reading of the clan has put me is i feel like compared to a lot of the other clans where things seem to get worse for them constantly mm-hmm. malkavians are the most just shoved into the deep end at the very beginning sink or swim and generally if you can survive a couple nights or years you'll probably be better off over time. Whereas as you get things under control mm-hmm. and I, f- I, I would try and echo that in a creation of a realm for them where it's like, you know, up is down, left is right. Yellow is blue. But once you get your feeding, it starts to seem normal. Oh yeah. No, if instead you're... of starting it normal and then cranking it oh, to weird. Yeah. No, that's what I was saying for an outsider dealing with this. If you're like a Malkavian within having to deal with the network, I would just go full fucking Alice in Wonderland where it's just like, all right, you open the door and now just fucking uh, everything is mushrooms. What? It's mushrooms. Go through the mushroom door. Okay. Now you're in a realm of plaid. If you pull the thread of plaid, it is now a book and now you have the info you need. But everybody within the mushroom room and the plaid space and, you know, the teacups and whatnot, they're accustomed to that. Yeah. I think that that kind of makes sense. I think that's also generally just kind of at least... From my reading, a lot of the vibe mm-hmm. of like the changeling, like spirit realm, which is why they get along so well, which is like, very heavily implied in the first clan book and then talked about less and less, but definitely fact checked even up through V20, where in V20, it's only they have like, these are the core um, tenets of being a Malkavian. Mm-hmm. And one of them is just like, we get along with the Fabings. They're chill. Like, be nice to them and they'll be nice to us. Yeah. And I think that is literally just, like, they both experience things that are so extreme and on that weird mm-hmm. scale that they're just like, I get it. You get it, right? We you get, get it. it. We we both have seen the time knife. Yeah. So. And the same with mages, whereas they've, like, forced themselves to do it, essentially, compared to Malkavians who just fall into it and changelings who are born into it. The wizards, essentially learn their way into it or awaken somehow into it mm-hmm. Deli- theirs is more of like a aha where the malkavians and the changelings like yeah we know yeah well the changelings are like yeah we know and the malkavians are like holy shit all right all right we're all right <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i wasn't expecting to do acid today but yeah. here we are <laughs> yeah so i think that's also i know we mentioned it in one of the others but i think maybe not so much that they are i don't know that that's something i think you could you should just decide for your own chronicle i don't think it's ever explicitly stated um even in the just heavily implied in the original book but what's going on between the malkavians and the fey and the other creatures like just figure that out for your own game i don't think you i don't really have a perfect th- working order theory and i think it's better to not have one set one in your own game based on how the game goes but yeah. like i think that that could even be set on an individual basis it's interesting it's really interesting but yeah the, well, there's a lot of room to explore for stories um have the vibe be set for what you want i'm somebody that would enjoy more getting into the horror of changeling and fey and having Malkavians being like, yeah, they're cool. <laughs> Don't fuck her out. We're, 
guys, we, we are going to leave this jar of honey and this 12 pack of grape soda on this store step. And then we're not, we're going to leave. And when I say we're leaving, don't turn around. Oh, oh. do you have a cigarette? <laughs> yeah. I can't have this. It has the menthol bead in it. God <laughs> fucking damn right. it. It has to dig that out. <laughs> but, but yeah because we're a v5 uh show mm-hmm. what does v5 specifically say and this is where we get into the lore sheet that is the cobweb the cobweb lore sheet that is malk only so like i implied earlier this i think this is more what makes malkavians malkavians than the madness itself mm-hmm. uh does anyone want to read the quote it's a bit of a mouthful but you're never truly alone not anymore Not even if you want to be. Not even if you try to be. The cobweb catches so many thoughts in its sticky strands, sends them skittering further inside, or reverberating to the far edges. You're not always sure if the thoughts you're hearing are from now. Some feel that, some feel like they've been stuck for years and have just shaken loose. Others taste like tomorrow. That's the quote. Yeah. Nailed it. Well, kind of. I got the first half good. That second half I kind of stumbled through. You're, You're pretty. Thanks. Yeah. It's funny when I was at Magic yesterday, someone asked me if I was wearing makeup and I was like, no, I got punched in the eye. And they're like, what happened? And I explained what happened. And then they were like, by the way, fuck you. And I'm like, what the hell? And they were like, that's the most beautiful black eye I've ever seen. I was like, thank you, I guess, because they, they thought it was makeup. <laughs> I think that the v- V5 kind of echoes all of the above a little bit. That is the first paragraph of like a whole half sheet of writing. So go check that out in the Chicago by Night book. For some reason, that's not in the core. The cobweb page isn't in the core book. There's like the Sabbat, uh, one of the Sabbat um, Malkavians descendants pages in the core book and not the cobweb. Yeah. Uh, well, the cool thing is with her page is at least her thing is like, I'm here to break blood bonds. And there's like sick. That's cool. Yeah. And you can I think the five dot is like you can literally kidnap someone and like break their allegiance to the Camarilla or the Sabbat or the Anarchs. Mm -hmm. But, but more importantly, the cobweb. So uh, the first dot allows you to perceive messages from the cobweb occasionally. So you have to buy dots in this, but the first dot is what gives that character the ability to even perceive the network, which I think is a weird. I personally think that all Malkavian should just have this first dot. Maybe if you're a nice ST, just give it to them because it's just as much a weapon against them as it is for them. Yeah, th- if I they think... don't want it, they can say no. But I personally would any Malkavian player that took it in one of my games that didn't take it, I'd be like, do you want this? Put it on the table. Be like, I might shoot you with this gun, but do you want this gun? Yeah, and it's like the first dot might be a, uh, you can word it as a, you can actively perceive this as opposed to just it's passively there and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I think the way I like to run the clan, I just think that that should be inherent. Figure that out. That's something to talk to about with your Malkavian players or as a Malkavian character, bring up with your ST. Because I also know a lot of STs who just want to use the cobweb automatically so maybe you'll get a free dot in something if you mention hey you're technically supposed to have this to you might get a free lore sheet dot hell yeah uh so that's something to worth worth talking about the later levels let you have brief flashes of communication you can send pictures or feelings a couple words you can initiate the call which is this game's condensed version of malkavian time or malk time um you higher levels let you see the world through your children's senses so you have to have turned some people but then for the evening you can be like i want to see what joey's looking at Hmm, wonder what sabrina's smelling right now joey's back on the porn again don't know why he keeps doing that we can't jerk off (laughs) blush of life baby (laughs) baby Um, he finds it fascinating the actors are just so engaged in their work (laughs) is joey doing the 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 foley art for the porno yes (laughs) yes call back a um And then the fifth dot, speaking of callbacks, um, allows you to speak to something that is possibly, or at least claims, to be Malkov, and he'll reveal secrets to you. Great. I don't know if I want to speak to Papa. Now, if you want to speak to other beings through the network, um, you could obviously run that fifth dot as them instead. If you're a cool ST, you might let players take multiple dots in that to talk to multiple beings. If they're try- really trying, uh, there's a lot of fun you can have with these lore dots. Um, I know, I think it's in the very first edition of Vampire, the Malkavians, one of their dots was like, you can just ask the ST a question. Oh, yeah. Your character can directly ask the ST a question once per story. Mm-hmm. And they, and have, they have, to, have to be honest. Yeah. 
So their their character is asking the person who's asking. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I've 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 run games where that happened. I was like, you want to talk to God? All right, what's up? But in the moment, I just for the fun for everybody else, it's just like the character literally turned slightly to like the left or the right and is talking to the middle distance. So it's like he looks like he's trying to break a fourth wall. <laughs> you don't see a fourth wall. Uh or, you know, like, um, I don't know how many of y'all have seen Fleabag. There's a lot of moments in that show where the main character is interacting with actors and stuff in the scene, as you would in a normal TV show. But then something happens, and then she just kind of, like, looks at the camera. Like a and Scrubs moment. A little Scrubs moment. But or it's... that's so Raven moment. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's there's lots of fun you can have with this. Dare- Deadpool moment. Yeah. I ruined it. Nah, it's okay. No, eh. Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool is actually not bad. It's mid. Yeah, like I said, it's not bad. Um, we'll say, uh, if you want to do this in V5, this could be a play by the rule of cool. Like as long as your player's not abusing it and just, just like, man, I don't know. Hey, storyteller, can I just ask this? And I'm just like, yeah, but you need to role play the fact that you are being cuckoo bananas in front of your friends. But yeah, I answer questions up. You ever <laughs> want, I, I'm, I know I've been bringing this up a lot. I don't think I've actually brought up on this show, but if you've been talking to me in the discord, I have, I've been watching through quantum leap. Oh. I don't know if either of you have ever watched Quantum Leap. I have watched the Quantum but, Leap. But um, it's a guy who gets sent through time and he inhabits the bodies of other people and he has to do something. He has to fix something in the timeline before he can move forward and he's slowly moving closer to back home. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a scientist. One of his scientist buddies can appear to him through holograms to talk to him. And there's multiple times in the show where they're talking and someone walks up and be like, who the fuck are you talking to? So if you want to do a quantum leap character, that's how Perfect. you do it. Yeah. You yeah. could have your own uh, intelligent AI computer Ziggy sending you data <laughs> if you really want to put the dots into it. Yeah. And I mean, oh. if you are if you want to limit a player from uh, potentially abusing the system, I would say maybe do a resolve and composure role to see if they're like, okay, cool. Let's see if you can maintain you could do that, or... I like the idea of running him as an NPC, essentially. Being mm-hmm. like, after a while, being like, I've answered like four questions for you. You're gonna have to do something for me. Yeah, it it's, it's, it specifically says that they will answer questions or um, give you things to do. So you could essentially use them as like a quest giver. Um, mm-hmm. You could also, doesn't mean that if they start to annoy them, doesn't mean the data they give you is correct Mm -hmm. um a lot of different ways you could run it maybe they are kind of telling you the right thing but they're also working towards their own ends at the same time even if it is actually malkov they're talking to you you have no fucking clue what he's up to he might be trying to topple the prince while you're just trying to like keep your house safe for the (laughs) evening like they are are machinations upon machinations the guy who can see through the eyes of the entire clan specifically asking you to do something could have repercussions and reverberations throughout the world but you're like oh cool i didn't piss off the boss today thanks dad (laughs) uh yeah uh slightly slightly breaking the uh the ghouls are not part of the madness network uh so the chicago when i gave that i've run for you guys where uh for the malkavian player in that uh their sire is in the game and their sire commit communicates exclusively through car- carrier pigeons, like messenger pigeons. Mm-hmm. I have had him. I was like, well, how long has he been in the city? Okay. Like a hundred years. He has been ghouling pigeons for a hundred years and he gets really emotionally attached to these pigeons. So there's a couple of them that he's ghouled for so long that I have allowed the pigeons, just a couple, like three or four to be part of like the outer edgiest edge of the madness network. I'm so <laughs> highly amused by that idea of just a couple of powerful Malkavians in the city are able to tap into four pigeons. They, they don't know. Yeah, they're not entirely <laughs> sure. They're just like, man, they're like, I don't this know. This is a fucking pigeon. Why is this here? Just He's like, I don't know how the fuck the neonate keeps getting on this fucking edge of the building. But yeah. like, good on him. <laughs> well, I would almost take it a step further. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it be with ghouls, human, or animal. If you have a Malkavian revenant family, oh god, um, that has been around for so long, they might almost form their own version of the Madness Network. Whereas, like this revenant family has bred their own hive mind, essentially. And their dormitor could access that. Oh because god, because it's off that's... of his his or her blood. Yes. I don't know why that's making me think of like Resident Evil Seven, but yeah. Yeah, it's very. 
I think that could be wild. I know um, in Ash's game, it was a Zemitz mm-hmm. uh, Revenant family that was getting up to some wild shit. I know Revenant families are all kinds of fucked up, but I can't imagine what a Malkavian Revenant family would look like. And I imagine it would have to be some kind of hive mind nightmare. And I think it would be unconnected to the regular Madness Network. I think they would almost have their own like incestuous, crazy, old money family Revenant have hive you mind. seen the series since eight? I've heard of it. I haven't watched yeah, it. Yeah, so it's kind of a superhero show, but these eight characters have basically synesthesia with each other. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that would be awkward to be like, I can feel my parents are fucking. Yep. And vice versa. I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's awful. Oh, no. I, I like that it works because, excuse me, Um, I like the idea and the name sounds good, so it works. But it's also something, if we're talking about senses coming through the Madness Network, um, I'm going to look it up. But science, we are way past um, having seven senses. Mm -hmm. Even scientists believe that we have way more than seven senses, or the five senses, or the seven senses. There are nine, there are now considered nine confirmed senses, 21 not as strong but confirmed, and 33 debated senses. What the fuck? Uh, Well, things like sense of direction sen- uh. sense of balance there are people who have their sense of balance thrown off so long that they are in wheelchairs yeah that is a human sense now imagine a malkavian just having random like feelings of balance sent to them they just get not vertigo even randomly. yeah not even just angry horny sad but just like oh you're vertigo you feel like you're falling yeah oh you feel like you're look wa- you're walking north hmm that would be awful. You're just walking somewhere and suddenly you get, you know, that feeling when you're like almost asleep and then you get that feeling that you're falling and your body jerks awake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just having that when you're just walking down the street would be fucking awful. Yeah. Just, you're, just, you're, you're just walking and suddenly like, like ah! oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Nightmare. <laughs> fucking awful. There was one time I feel so fucking bad. Uh-huh. It was a combination of that. And somehow, like, you know, how the, the whole theory of like. Um, there is a gunshot, but it sounds like your alarm and, or there's a gunshot and you wake up as the gunshot goes off in your dream and you see, you hear thunder and somehow, you know, I think that it's brought up in John dies at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, how did your brain know the lightning was coming? Cause it had to like plan that ahead and the lightning hit and it timed perfectly with your dream and blah, 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 blah. Science can probably turn that off completely, but it's a cool idea that that's yeah. kind of what would be happening there. And Oh, story. Sorry, I forgot where I was going. Oh. That happened, but somebody honked a horn just as I had the falling mm-hmm. sensation, and I feel so bad. Luckily, she was still really young. Kirby was laying on my mm-hmm. feet, and I kicked my feet so fucking oh, hard. No. I literally you threw her across kitty? the room. Oh. Yeah, I felt so bad. She looked at me like, what Poor the baby. fuck is wrong with you? How could you betray me like this? I'm so sorry, Kerbs. Yeah. Um. I was actually looking at the some of the other senses on this list. You could really fuck with the player. Oh, yeah. Or as a player, like, be like, have some really more interesting scenes than be like, I'm, have, I'm having a mental illness moment. Um, Your sense of time. Mm-hmm. Sense of time. Oof. I was going to say um, proprioception. I believe is how it's pronounced, but awareness of body parts without visual stimuli. Mm-hmm. It's where like ghost limb syndrome feels mm. like. Imagine feeling another Malkavian's limb for a second, or Ew. I swear his arm was mine. That's weird. Kind of moments just, could happen uh, if you're deep enough into it. Yeah. Like again, with the transhumanist mm-hmm. uh, clan yeah. kind of talks like. Oh yeah, I've, I've read some of the studies that are really interesting about how... Uh, when you're, I have talked about this, I think, in other episodes where when you're using tools, your brain uh, s- extends its sense of limb and self into the tool. And so, and the similar thing happens when you use like your phone or digital devices. Hmm. So your brain starts registering your sense of self into the digital space. Yeah. So <laughs> that's fun. Now imagine you're having uh, uh, an episode, but your sense of self is extending into somebody else in not only a different place, but a different time. Yeah. Yeah. You can, give her, you can do some cool stuff with this. I would love people to do more of that kind of thing. Yeah. And you can even have moments like this is going a little bit 
off the deep end mm. but i was recently watching some random reel so i cannot cite it and i apologize but i don't know if you guys were around when people were smoking like all the fake weeds in like the early 2000s yeah i can't even remember what they were all called i never smoked them but yeah like the essentially spice yeah spice yeah. k2 that mm-hmm. kind of stuff oh god yeah. um some of those trips there are people who are saying that that may have been one of the strongest hallucinogens ever like in public hands essentially some of the formulations of those Hmm. were crazy one guy was talking about a trip he took where um he lived like five years of a life in an underwater world and just like he was out for like 10 minutes but in his mind he was just in living another life for five years it felt like five years he like lived this other life with like a wife and they lived in an underwater world together and then his friend tried to like wake him up and handed him water and he just immediately like tried to breathe the water in and he had to be like wait a minute okay i know where i am now we don't breathe water here we drink it we drink it and he had to like remind himself like where he was and to Hmm. drink water and like he had this whole other life experience that just like in a blink of an eye essentially hallucinogens I, are crazy i'm feeling much better about the choice i made the one time i tried uh fucking salvia i think i've shared that story on the show yeah yeah where yeah i felt like a demon was gonna like try and pull me into a couch and i just said no and i just willpowered my way through not going into a hallucination <laughs> yeah it was not uh, wherever that was going was not good so i'm glad i avoided that i don't want to spend five years of couch time that doesn't seem like it. That doesn't seem like a good time. But yeah, I think this could also be a fun clan if you're not doing mage or or you don't have any clan of ex or cult of ecstasy members around. I think just like making them live like through another Malkavian's life for a couple of years, real quick out of nowhere, and then okay, just the and then you realize that character's a main character in the plot. Oh no, and you oh. know a lot about him and then intimately. Just... Oh no, or you could even get into the if people in the coterie are like drinking each other's blood or if there's an an npc that forces a blood bond you can give just a touch of that to another player and just make them deal with that and now you're like cool now you have this whole unique perspective on this clan that you've been giving shit to for however many years you've been undead good job asshole hell yeah Yeah. and who knows maybe that's what's happening when you have a little malkavian blood in you you're just hearing whispers with no ability to send you're just getting hit with random shit no mouth must scream Cat dead. Talk later. <laughs> <laughs> I have those sweatpants. They're good. Those are really good ones. Yeah. Fucking reanimator is a good fucking it's a great movie. Great movie. So, uh, I feel like the end of that movie is also a good just Malkavian horror moment of just there's naked corpses, there's portals being opened to fucking who knows where. My my very first uh, vampire character ever mm-hmm. was a Malkavian based on herbert west hell yeah um he was a tenured professor at a college in washington which is what excused him to only teach night classes and be a general asshole um and just disappear when he needed to but um he um had learned i spent a lot of his points for him to learn vicissitude and his theory was that if he could learn to recreate a living human he could learn he could create a new body for himself and become human honestly work <laughs> get it buddy not get the, it. not the worst out of all of the i'm trying to be human again plot not the worst i've heard that's that 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 was my first vampire character so maybe not the most I mean, successful was, attempt at it but he was like three steps of just being as a meaty yeah because like especially the older ones are they're like i will cure my vampirism through vicissitude i will become something better i don't think that's how that's gonna work my guy <laughs> Well, they won't become human, but uh, <laughs> they might become something better. That's, uh, see, he wasn't trying to become something better, though. Yeah. And he didn't experiment on himself. He was specifically doing it to other things uh, to like, well, if I can figure out how to do this, then I, I can said, just like, go three like... Steps. That's yeah. why I said three steps. Yeah. <laughs> human experimentation. I thought we were going to get away from all of us being meat. No, well, we are always we, well, meat. Yeah, we can't get away from that. <laughs> um, 100% of the time, we are meat. <laughs> so i say final thoughts. Um, I would love to see less. He's just wacky Malkavians and more 
he is dealing with the entirety of human knowledge exploding through his brain at all times. It's really good. I cut it out of the script I'd originally. We can maybe get into it more for another episode, more focused on that, kind of like the snuff, like a side episode, but like just the internet and its repercussions. Like, oh, yeah. That's... That used to be the Nosferatu, but I feel like the Malkavians also... Malkavians fall into that a lot. I've played a, a character a couple of times that's a Tremere that's very like... But internet and technology is literally just runes on stones. How is that literally any different than what the fuck we're doing? Also, memes are spells. <laughs> no. Um... But yeah, no, that would be a great, just like, what is the repercussions of the internet? Not also just, oh God, just dealing with the Madness Network and the internet at the same time, I feel like it's also its own unique nightmare. Yeah. Because it's like, well, this is like what's in my head all the time, but it's also making the things in my head worse. Ah. Maybe you would just give context for one or the other. <laughs> maybe you would give context. Yeah. Like, maybe. Like, I mean, maybe, you know, a Malkavian who's super duper 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 old even has the archaic flaw could take a few points in computer and just be like, well, this shit's just like the stuff I've been dealing with in my head. This it's makes just, more sense than books. Let's fucking go. Yeah, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like the Madness Network is closer to like 4chan pre-2012 ish Mm -hmm. Before the internet got really big, when it was still kind of its own isolated, um, a lot of different people still go to this website and just kind of blow off whatever the fuck's going on in their head. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a serious, as serious place. Um, it wasn't serious business, as they like to say. It hasn't, it didn't become the experimented on by CIA and Cambridge analytical, like political hellscape that it is now. Right. Uh, like. <laughs> That's a whole rabbit hole you can fall down to that we're not mm, going to get into. Not but like, right now. I imagine that's kind of like what the Madness Network is. It's like going in 2008 going on like B yeah. and being like, that's a dead body. That's a meme about cute cats. That's people trying to hunt down a man who killed a cat. Yeah. Yeah. Don't fuck with cats is a good documentary. Yeah. It's callbacks. Callbacks. But um, yeah. Uh. Do more. You can definitely take a lot of those like weird sci-fi, like transhumanist horror stories and put them in Malkavians. I believe it's the V20 Lore of the Clans book even hints at some powerful Malkavians going into Torpor and just taking over the body of younger Malkavians. I've used those to get out point. of Torpor. Like I was like, I don't like this body. Bloop bloop. You can or more horrifying. I'm stuck in Istanbul and I need to get a message to somebody in Ottawa. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a dirt nap and then show up in somebody else's body. That kind of stuff wakes me out, squicks me out really bad. I'm just like, mm, no, 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 I don't like. Loss, loss of mental autonomy really fucks with me. So I'm like, mm. Is mm -hmm. it scarier to you're walking down the street as a Malkavian and boop, you have that body? I guess that wouldn't work. Never mind. Hmm. I was going to say, or you're in a coma. You wake up, but you don't wake up. Oh, well, somebody else is in there? Somebody else is in there. Ah, Some of the Malkavians in there. Gross. And then they become a cleaver. No! Okay, or imagine <laughs> no! um, Imagine that you go into torpor and you decide to like, oh, I'm just going to go walk around in another body for a while. And then you go try to go back and realize someone else did that to you and now you can't go home. <laughs> Damn. Oh, no. Now you have to go hunt down you so you can re-torpor you so you can try to get somebody else out of you so you can get back no, in you. you That's how you play a young vampire with a lot of knowledge. Look, yeah. you need to understand I want my old body back because I had just the perfect little buns for my favorite pair of pants. <laughs> And now I can't find trousers that fit anymore. And you need to understand that was one of the few creature comforts I had left. Give me it back. I need it back. It's like the worst version of like your sibling stealing your clothes. Yeah. Like I want my body back. <laughs> I was going to wear that today. God. Fuck. <laughs> Love it. He's parting my hair on the right. I never part my hair that way. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you guys Ooh. have any other hold on Ooh, Even... he does actually have other mm. final thoughts just an idea i love the idea you're playing a not vampire you're playing a human mm -hmm. in like world of darkness you have woken up from a coma mm -hmm. and there is a malkavian convinced that your body is theirs and you took it 
Like oh, they no. were on that little jog and they're like, that's my fucking body. Give it back. And Wait, like, you're me. Yeah. No, Tur- you don't get it. You're me. Right. Yeah. Turns out. Like, what are you talking you're about? You're actually a blood descendant of that guy. And just because of how genes work, you happen to look, just look almost identical. Yes. Portrait of Dorian Gray scenario. Yeah. Almost. almost. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, I don't know who the fuck this. So it's a guy that looks like he's your cousin. Right. And you're like, I've never met this man. Like, you guys are clearly like, related. Give me my body back. And you're just like. <laughs> get out. Like I woke up from a coma. I don't know what you're Where's talking about. Where's my wife? <laughs> yeah. What's what's the <laughs> vampire type where you the name I feel like didn't fit it, but it's where you have like a family. Yeah, That's Cleaver. Is that Cleaver? Cleaver? I yeah. hate that name for that. It does not I make sense. I always thought to me. it was a reference to the stepfather. That's so vague. Yeah. It's I, very vague. You're not wrong. But uh I see you said that and I assumed it was that was one of the other ones. But uh, yeah, never mind then. I was gonna say you could go further with that, but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> just also watch the stepfather. The first two are pretty oh, good. Oh, I've, I've yeah, seen yeah, all like good. three or four. Yeah. I just hate. I I've specifically always hated that specific predator type name because it just never made sense to me. Yeah, it's kind of goofy. It's it's a little goofums, but that predator type is also one of the more like icky. Yeah, like it's great, but it's also just like uh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> any other final thoughts? I I I like Madness Network stuff. Unfortunately, I feel like I can just go on about this all fucking night, and I don't have... I've run out of booze. That's why this episode's about as long as our normal length, and it's about a page shorter in notes, because I know we'd have a lot to talk about on hey. this one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, if people want further musings on Madness Network options and ideas, we do have our Discord. Yeah, well, I also was, if you go to the wiki, someone made a tapestry page that's linked on like their Google Drive, but it's like literally like a map of a thousand Malkavian names, if that's useful to you. Um, That's neat. We could even just make a chat. I don't know if we should. I'd say we could even just make a chat called uh, the Madness Network and people can just, we'll put a timer on it and every like once per day, you can just say something. That could be fun. Like all those little audio notes. Audio notes are just uh, little, little, text. little text type, but you just make it so people can only post like once every six hours or something. Yeah, I think we can do that. Hell yeah. That'd be fun. That's not going to invite and manifest anything. We're definitely not creating our own screaming board. If we could find a way to make it anonymous too, that'd be even more terrifying, but I don't think I you don't can. I don't think we can with Discord. We'll have to look. We'll look into it. Yeah. Uh, this is going to end up getting us in trouble. I love the idea. But this I, is we're doing it. No, we're doing it. It's probably going to get us in trouble, but you know. What are they gonna do? Stop me? Uh, I cast I cast a ritual. You can't cancel me. <laughs> we have a podcast that's decided we're uncancelable. No. I, I'm disabled. You have to be nice to me. Yeah, Hunter's oh disabled. God. I'm kind of disabled and non-binary and intersex. I guess so. Like, uh... John, you're the most normal one at this table. How do you that's feel? Weird, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's weird. That's so no, sorry. fucking normie. That's, fucking... It's, it's strange. I would. <laughs> He's our straight white guy. He's really our token straight that. white guy. I would have really argued that, but I've gotten my levels all like leveled out yeah. in my brain. So yeah, I mean, at least currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the win. meds seem to be working pretty good. I win. Oh yeah, you do. Huh. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> I tried real hard. <laughs> Thanks, Paralyzed, for the music. Yeah. Uh, they're on Bandcamp. Check them out. Give them a dollar. Yeah. Uh, uh, or two. Or two. And Hal, who does Paralyze, uh, has a new band out called World I Hate, and Ooh. they just put some music out, so go check that out, too. Are we going to Are we gonna sample it at the end or not? Nah? Uh, I haven't asked, so not this episode, Okay, but maybe in the future. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think they're still promoting it as a future thing, but by the time you hear this, it might be out. I don't know. Oh, we'll find out. You know, we'll news. fix it in post. Um. But if you want to keep up with updates with things like that, we are on Twitter at blank underscore bodies. We uh, exist on Instagram at blank bodies pod. Same with Tumblr at blank bodies pod. Uh, we have TikTok at blank bodies podcast. Mm-hmm. Slightly different. If you enjoy what we're doing, you'd like to support us. We have a Patreon. You can support us at a couple different tiers. If you want to throw us a couple five bucks, get a Discord title and a special patrons Discord channel the discord itself is free but there is a channel where i ask for you know feedback on episodes questions while i'm writing on people want to see stuff like that yeah. that channel's actually been kind of popping off recently yeah also working on some summertime projects that having patron uh 
input would be super valuable and please help me i'm stupid yeah so <laughs> that that's gonna thing also that you get to vote on polls which includes um our next clan we're doing nosferatu but after that we awesome. haven't decided awesome. uh and those polls are now patron only because twitter makes you pay for polls and we're not doing that shit fuck elon musk we also no. we also have our first um mega dump of show notes coming up Mm-hmm. That that's going to be up there, uh, which is going to be copies of the script and stuff like that. Uh, we also, you know, for twenty five bucks, you get a character sheet. Stick with that for a year. You get a, sorry, you get a character draw sketch. You get a sketch of one of your vampire characters done by Sarah herself. Stick with it for a full year, and you'll get a full color illustration. We also have a hundred dollar blood tier. I have a goodie bag full of stuff that I've been putting in there. Uh, don't give us that money unless you're comfortable to do so. Yeah. Corn tub. Yeah, thousand dollar corn tub. Do give John a thousand dollars for the corn tub, though. You give us a thousand dollars, I go online and I will order a um, hot tub that's made out of wood that also boils corn while you're in it, and we will do a live stream of something vampire related from ye corn tub. I am assuming my plan is just to have Skipper do a slutty goth stream. We're going to get so many fishnets. It's so also, many fishnets. It, it's also becoming less funny and more of a threat as summer happens and it's starting <laughs> to be hot yeah. where we may actually just be boiling corn and skipper. <laughs> but, you know, we'll, we'll want it again by the fall. So, you know, keep that in your heart and your mind. <laughs> as I go into heat stroke, my ramblings are going to get a little bit more <laughs> madness networky. Yeah. We'll do, we'll do the stream at night. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It'll be better. It'll be fine. Yeah. We can get some sexy lights going on then, too. I do, I've got some lights. I got, I've got so much fucking lighting. <laughs> nice. Might have to get one of those temporary pop-up tents because I don't know how the neighbors would feel. But could about... we put it inside my big one? No, not without damaging it. I don't. Yeah, think we'd have to get one of those like gazebo tents because I mean, kind yeah. they have for like weddings. Yeah, oh. let's be honest. The neighbors might not be able to handle the power of your nip knobs. So... I don't wear clothes a lot. They've definitely like seen me like yelling at the dog in my underpants. So like, <laughs> hit Skipper's nip knobs is. Nah, par for the course that's fair um <laughs> that's fair <laughs> anyway ops used to be a daily experience for most people around me yeah we still live together yeah. there was a lot of underpants i've nights. gotten a lot of free I shows i really don't like shirts if i don't need them i've yeah. gotten a lot of free shows <laughs> i keep a t-shirt i work from home and i keep a button-up t-shirt and a um fancy white boy like fleece zip up mm-hmm. by my desk and if someone calls me i shirt Fleece, answer the phone. <laughs> Done talking. Off comes the fleece. Off comes the shirt. The uh, the pants situation doesn't change. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm glad you guys Except have that seasonally. privilege. I have to work from home. I know. Son of a bitch. They won't allow me on the roads after what happened. I know. It's after better, the incident. You know, it's honestly better for the citizenry. Yeah. <laughs> if you are kept indoors. <laughs> I've always been the Malkavian of the group. They're just protecting you all from me. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. yes. Oh, God. Um. So, yeah, we're going to be at Gen Con. We're going to be doing this live. Hey! Uh, if you're listening to this uh, when it comes out, if you're listening to a future, if this is an echo of a memory past, you've missed out. But the recording will probably be online. We are Unless it gets botched real bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, far... In which case, we'll just make up a story and tell you about it. Okay, yeah. so... We'll just have the same conversation again, but more yeah. um, organized. We've talked about this. So this yeah. episode <laughs> should be out on May 15th, uh, Sunday, the 21st of May. If you're going to be reserving anything for Gen Con, have your wish list ready. Literally the second it becomes noon, May 21st, you hit the button to submit because you are competing against many, many thousands of nerds. Yes, our our event should be is only two bucks, and that's literally just for the hosting fee, so we can like rent the equipment to do the the thing. Uh, as far as I know, we should be okay on space, but if it becomes a problem, we'll work on it. Yeah, and um, we'll t- we'll take those random tickets too. Oh, um, the generics, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, as long as uh, no one gets on us about a fire code, I will treat it like a house show in which you slip me money and then you get to listen to me talk. Yeah. 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 We're going to do a live thing. It'll be nice seeing all of your faces. Yeah. I might be a slutty moth. I don't know if we're doing the Mothman meetup Friday or Saturday. It's like, I'm thinking it's Friday. I don't know. I don't. I probably won't participate. That's okay. Because I don't have a good form of travel, and I just don't know if I can do that to myself all day. Uh, just, but... just put, literally, just put on a black shirt and then, like, a shitty headband with, like, two red pom-poms on it. 
Pom poms. Pom poms. But yeah, uh, we're gonna be at Gen Con. We're gonna have another announcement about it uh, this weekend, just so people can remember to hit the button on the thing. So uh, we're talking. I need to get a head count very soon. We're talking about doing like a little meetup with everyone. Last time we went out and got food with people. Mm-hmm. The list might be getting a Bigger. little big to do that where we originally planning. So well, we, we will, will look into it. Figure it out. Hopefully, maybe we might. Out. We might also. I was thinking about maybe moving it to like thursday night where it's still early and the restaurants won't be nightmare packed yet we'll find out we'll make it work uh but yeah our event is friday 10 a.m at the weston if you go to uh events just type in blank bodies we're like the first thing that pops up shockingly me yeah it's us we're doing it we're adults now hooray i'm finally 21 (laughs) god In vampire years? The license I mean the license says thirty something. Oh, that's fair. Don't let don't let that distract you from the truth. Don't let the government I know, that's hold not back how time dreams. really works. <laughs> okay, we gotta go. Yeah, we were We gotta go. We got we got things to grill. Damn, we do be grilling. We though. do be grilling though. All right, I love you. I Bye-bye. think I'm twenty five in vampire years. Mwah!